Hello and welcome to today's video where we dive into divorce. Why does she get a prenup? I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, divorce versus not divorce, cooling loops. Let's get into it. So I think an easy way to, to understand this is that if you pictured a Venn diagram, the two circles with a little overlap in the middle, you got the two loops, and the only overlap is our coolant reservoir. That's it. And that's where we fill up our coolant for both the loops. So with the two loops running, if there's any loss of coolant, this reservoir gravity feeds into either of them, whichever is low, and makes sure they're both full. So what doesn't happen though, is the coolant from one loop circulating through the reservoir then into the other, and then into, the, that doesn't happen. So there will be a small mixing effect that happens just over time with things settling. So, but it doesn't happen, that mixing doesn't happen on a wide open throttle, full throttle run. They stay independent of each other. So an advantage though, say if you were to divorce them, that would allow your supercharger loop to say run 100% distilled water with like a water wetter additive. So this loop would have a higher specific heat capacity. So it could handle more. Now what the science has found is that a 50-50 mix with coolant and distilled water as recommended per Audi is 86% efficient as a, so 86% as a 100% distilled water solution. In my books, that's really, really close. So a really good divorce system would have a spot to use the an, an OEM electrical plug. I can't show you, it's underneath this reservoir. But it would be able to tap into that one, this wiring harness, and come over, usually it's the divorce reservoir sits about here. And so it'd be able to tap into the OEM wiring harness, so if the level gets low in the divorced reservoir, you'll get a notification on your dash so, still. So it retains that OEM function, so you don't run your loop low, say by accident you, a hose fails, leaks, whatever. You still get that OEM function. Now something else with that divorced reservoir is it should have a vented cap. And the reason for that is to not overpressure the loop. The weakest link being our two intercoolers inside the supercharger. They will pop and you'll be replacing them more often, but you're also gonna be damaging your engine with having a pressured up system blowing coolant, even if you're not divorced, but when you have those bricks fail and you're leaking coolant into your engine through your intake valves into your cylinders, yeah, you can kill an engine. So our OEM system, this cap here, so you know, relieves pressure when it exceeds 22 PSI. So if you are considering or have a divorce system already, Take a critical look at it. A good question to ask is where the loop is flowing through. If it flows up into the reservoir and then down into the pump again, instead of just having a bottom feed on that reservoir, and it just keeps, it's kind of the same thing as the OEM, gravity fills if there's a loss of coolant. But if it flows into that reservoir, I would pass on it. The reason being is that's how foaming happens. Foaming is adding more oxygen into the water, into the coolant solution, and reduces the effectiveness of the entire divorce loop. So more air in the water is a problem, and it's, it's no different when we fill up our coolant system and we're bleeding from the screws and getting that air out. So personally, I haven't ran a divorce system yet on my car. I've optimized my supercharger cooling loop. It does a great job of keeping my IATs down nice and low, and I can make excellent power. I did my 10 second pass on a normal OEM loop here. Normal, optimized OEM loop without divorcing. I didn't feel like I wanted to add complexity to the, to the loop. So that wraps that up. There are some benefits to running the, the divorce system. Just make sure you've got a good one. So thank you very much for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button. Check out the other videos in the series. Hope you like this one. Stay tuned, peace.